There's a really exciting thing in this box, something that I never thought I would ever see. So we look inside. There we go. So, well, you can see straight away that it's black. The, the outside is just some perspex, lucite, as you call it in American, which is holding this black piece inside, and it's the black piece that's exciting. If you look at it a bit more, you can probably guess that it's carbon, and if you know about carbon, you can probably guess that it's graphite, because it's obviously not diamond. This is a piece of graphite from the world's very first nuclear reactor that was built under the sports stadium at Stagg Field in Chicago in the United States, and went operational, went critical for the first time on the 2nd of December 1942. Think back for a moment. In the early 1940s, there was a race to try and build an atom bomb and to try and demonstrate that nuclear reactors could work, that uranium atoms could be split by neutrons, and when they split, they would emit more neutrons. So the number of neutrons would build up and up and up, and eventually could lead to an explosion. The famous physicist Enrico Fermi, who was at that time working in Chicago, built a so-called nuclear pile. It was literally a pile of graphite blocks like this with uranium oxide and uranium metal, about five tons in all, distributed within it. So I don't have a very good model, but this will have to do. The reactor was not round, but was square. And while they were building it, they didn't want it to start reacting. So they put into it control rods, which could absorb neutrons. They used a mixture of cadmium, indium and silver. The reason they chose silver was because silver can absorb neutrons and become radioactive, so it can act rather like a neutron meter. So once they had finished building this reactor, they then started gently removing the rods. And when they got the last rod out, suddenly the number of neutrons being emitted went up and up and up. And they left it running, I think, for 28 minutes. And then they put the rods in back in again to cool it down. Because they built this reactor with no shielding, with no cooling, and in the middle of a really densely populated area of the states. So if it had blown up, it would have been serious. The reactor ran for quite a short time, a few months, and then was moved to outside um, Chicago onto the site of what later became the so-called Argonne National Lab. And in February, I visited the Argonne National Lab with the UK Minister of Science, David Willits, and he was leading the delegation. And to commemorate his visit, he was given this piece of graphite. You can imagine how I felt. This is something I would really like to have had. I got a nice pen, but I'd much rather have had a piece of graphite. But he did say that I could borrow it to make a video. Of course, Brady wasn't on the trip with me, so I made a couple of not very good home videos myself. So you can see the minister talking, actually mentioning this present that he was given. I was presented with a small piece of the graphite from that original nuclear reactor, which is a very special gift that I will treasure. I also went to visit the Henry Moore sculpture that has been built on the site of where the nuclear reactor was originally built. Unfortunately, they've built libraries and things around it, so it doesn't really give you much idea of the sports field. And there was a lot of snow there as well, and it was very cold. I think that it is extremely interesting that this graphite has been preserved, 
And I think at the time it was quite hard to get high enough purity graphite in that sort of quantity, many, many tons. But you can see my reactor's already collapsed. Oh um, I think we should move it to the outside <laughs> before it blows up. This piece of graphite is really symbolic of the whole nuclear age. And it was the start not only of the development of nuclear weapons, but of the nuclear power stations, which now supply a large proportion of the electricity in many countries across the world. Nuclear reactors still have problems in the sense that there is no elegant solution of what to do with the radioactive waste that is produced by the reactors. As time goes on, people develop a number of technologies which will put the radioactive material into glass, separates off the useful components. You will have seen we visited the National Nuclear Laboratory where they had separated off americium which can be used for smoke detectors and things like that. Plutonium can be used to power satellites. There are all sorts of very useful applications for small amounts of this material. I sometimes wondered whether this would be radioactive, but carbon is particularly um, useful for nuclear reactors because it does not easily become radioactive. It is in a thick layer of plastic, so unless it was contaminated from some other radioactive source, I think it's unlikely this will be radioactive. But perhaps we'll ask my colleague Steve Little to give it a quick check, just in case. Before you give it back to the minister. Uh, well, then we can decide. It's, we can be sure it will be safe to give it back to the minister. Are you going to give it back to him? Do you think he'll notice? Um, well, I saw him yesterday at another meeting in London and his assistant inquired where it was, so I think I'm going to have to give it back. <laughs> but he may see the video and relent. So, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs>